evacuate? In our moment of triumph? I think you overestimate their chances. Padme Amidala. <laughs> what was that accent? That was Gra Grand Moff Tarkin. <laughs> Star Wars, 1977. Uh, we hardly knew ye, because he died shortly after that moment. Spoiler alert for a 43-year-old film. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> it's the Resistance Broadcast. I'm not Tarkin. I'm John. How are you? Thanks for joining us today. You're the talking to us right now. Talking to us right now. Tar and I Tarkin to us. Tarkin to us. What are you talking about? That's James, everybody. He likes... <laughs> he, he, James loves a good play on words. It's... Uh, it's right up his alley, like a like a Chipotle burrito. And then we have Lacey Gilleran over here. Chipotle? <laughs> I, I don't have any idea what he's saying. He's I know you fumbling. usually say Chipotle. I was Chipo like... Chipotle, 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 Chipotle. Chipotle. <laughs> Chipotle, yeah. So uh, the reason why I quoted Tarkin, these guys know, you don't yet. Uh, well, you probably do because you saw the title of the episode. But uh, Star Wars villains, you know, we've talked about that on on the podcast. Do they have a problem with villains? Is there a villain problem in Star Wars? Um, we kind of wanted to have a fun discussion about do they kill villains off too soon in Star Wars sometimes? So we're going to have a, a little fun chat about that a bit later, uh, run through some old examples, who we wish stuck around more, who we, who we wish, uh, who we think may have uh, exited a little too soon, that sort of thing. Um, but uh, how you guys doing? It's uh, it's Thursday. The base is open. You guys feeling good? Feeling good? How you guys mm -hmm. doing? James, what's going on? How you doing, buddy? You, you got the Star Wars Newsnet shirt on, rocking and rolling. Yeah. What, what's the deal? What's up? What's new in your life right now? Potty training. <laughs> for for you? For yes, for me. A little old for that, but that's okay. So what? Bennett's um, like Bennett's like two now, right? Two and a half. Mm -hmm, two and a half. Yeah, I know. And uh, yeah, he's doing really good. He's moved to underwear. He's not doing the pull-ups anymore. All right, that's a big moment. That's a that's a and huge moment. And we asked him, we we asked him to go potty in the other room on his own, and we just you know like listen and just hear <laughs> every step of the way. And he sure enough, he went potty and washed his hands. Atta boy, um, especially the washing your hands part, huge. Uh, that's a big theme lately. Um, Lacey, what, what's the deal with you? How's uh, how's Chubbs? We haven't seen Chubbs make an appearance on the podcast in a while. What's going on with uh, Chubbs? Chubbs is just love and life for people that don't know who Chubbs is. Chubbs is my tuxedo cat that I rescued from the wilderness when his mm -hmm. mother died and he almost starved to death and I saved wow. him and he's my baby. So he's an actual rescue. Yeah, he was in the, my parents' backyard for some reason. Wow, very cool. Yeah. So what's what's uh, what's you got the makes a little too happen shirt on today? I do. Very cool. As creator, of all right. makes all, all right. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's what's going on with you? Me? Yeah. Uh, nothing. What's new? Just trying to stay healthy and positive. You gonna binge watch that Clone Wars season seven? <laughs> I don't know about that, but there's a lot of good stuff on TV right now. You're just going to watch the Clone Wars fan show with James to get caught up on everything tomorrow, right? Absolutely. I don't miss an episode. Um, James, by the way, how's that going? You having fun with that stuff? You're, uh, yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah. You got to get up nice and early tomorrow to watch episode mm -hmm. five. Mm -hmm. We're almost halfway done with Clone Wars season seven. It's crazy. Um, all right, James, what are we, what are we doing? A uh, little cheer at Imway to uh, kick off our first segment of the day or what? Yep, Will of the Force. Let's get into it. I fear nothing for all this as the Force wills it. All right. It's back, so we baby. got four questions. It is back, baby. It's actually Wait, Lacey, back. Um, Lacey, can you do that again? It's back, baby. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's back. So you, you, you might say that baby has back. I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back. Nope, hate it. Stop. Please. Um. All right, four questions. <laughs> Two of them come from resistance <laughs> officers on Patreon. Uh, we'll get to theirs in a minute. First, we're going to answer the question: Will we know who is writing and directing the next Star Wars movie before Star Wars Celebration? 
celebration is later this year. Uh, it only gives us a few more months. Lacey, do you think we're going to get that announcement in the time being? No, I think they're going to wait to announce that at celebration. <sighs> hmm. Bold claims. That, that's bold. Based on how they handled Rogue One, where they went in with like no information and they announced the title of the film and what it was about and showed concept art. I think they might wait. Hmm. John. Hmm. What do you think? Before they an- celebration? They announced the title of Rogue One at celebration? They did. I thought they didn't announce things at celebration. I thought that was like the whole thing. They did because it was the anthology series. And they yeah, said the it's first weird. of the anthology series is Rogue One. By the way, isn't I love Solo and I love Rogue One, but isn't don't you think the whole a Star Wars story thing is stupid? You're a Star Wars story. You're a pizza shirt. <laughs> not tonight, Did, I'm not. <clears throat> I I definitely Fair. think that it they took like a specific edge off. You know what I mean? Like when you hear like Final Fantasy anthology, you're like, oh, that's sweet. When you're like Final Fantasy, a Final Fantasy story. You're like, this is dumb. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I, I think I think if they went back, I think they would do. I, I know this is Will of the Force. I'm sorry. I had to get this out though. I, when I get a point, I gotta say it. I think if they went back, they wouldn't do the a Star Wars story thing, and then they would also do. They would leave crawls in. I think that was a big missing part of those movies. But they would do it in a different color or something, and the not first- yellow. Yeah, the first ad they ever did or teaser they did for Rogue One was the crawl from A New Hope. The New like Hope they, one, yeah. Yeah, they played off that crawl, so you just assumed like, oh, we're going to get a crawl. and we Yeah, didn't. but um, I mean, Solo sort of had a crawl because it had the same blue text, but flashing with what a crawl would have been. Mm. But anyway, um, I don't think so. We're so close to Celebration, assuming, and this question is pitched assuming it happens on schedule late August. Um I don't think so. I, I, unless they're about to really shock us and that they have something big planned, I just get this feeling that there's like nothing going on. And why would Bob Iger hide the fact that they have something cooking with a movie with investors? If they kind of knew something was going, he probably would have said something. So he said their focus is on TV, and that makes me think that they don't have anything. Like if they had a big idea for a billion dollar movie, he'd probably have said something. So I'm going to say no. I don't think they have anybody lined up yet. Man, it is hard to put put money on the table right now on this. I I think my thing is I th- I think <laughs> if they were going if they announced it before, I think then they could celebrate it more at the event. So I don't think they would announce it at the event. I don't know. I'm no, going to say no. They could have a future of film panel. They do that stuff all the time. No, I, I, I know. I know they could announce it at the event. I'm saying I don't think they would. I think more likely they would announce it uh, beforehand and then be able to talk about it a little bit more openly at Celebration. People go into Celebration like, oh, there's another movie. I want to know more about it. So they buy tickets or whatever. I don't know. I mm-hmm. don't know. It's already sold out or whatever. But I actually think the most likely thing is just that they're not going to. I think they're going to put all their money on TV and be like, this is what we're doing for the time being. You can hold off. Um, I don't know. We also didn't get m- much information on any of the other movies. Um, we all, all It was all episode nine, you know? So, But we thought they might announce the new movies last year's celebration. Um, so let's move on to a question from our resistance officer, on Patreon, and that's Major John Riley. Uh, John John wants to know, will Lucasfilm use the success or failure of the High Republic era books and comics to determine where to go next with streaming or feature films? So John, this is going right back at you. So many film questions. Yeah, I I think the next few ones are all going to be film related, interestingly enough. Or maybe not. Um, Do you think that uh, the High Republic is going to set a precedent for the future of streaming media and feature films. I don't think the future of star Wars movies is going to be dictated by how these books perform. Um, I think they, if they get a good pitch from a big Hollywood movie maker that happens to line up with what's going on with this, they'll go with it, whether they sell well or not. Um, 
I don't think, and it has nothing to do with quality of content, but I don't think a low leverage financial uh, product like the books are going to dictate how they map out their major investments, which are billion dollar blockbuster films. So I don't think the success or failure, whatever happens, I hope it's a success, the High Republic era books and comics. I don't think that will dictate what they do. So no. Lacey, what do you think? So this is tough for me because I'm a huge Harry Potter and Hunger Games fan. And those were completely dictated by the book success. Like they wouldn't have made movies of those books. But those were adaptations. Star Wars doesn't do that. Not yet. They won't do it. Um, okay. You answered. Now it's my answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, uh, do I think the books will determine the next streaming or films? I think that they have a plan in place already. I don't think those books are going to determine that. Um, I think the only thing they might help with is like a time frame. Like, hey, let's explore this time frame, but make your own stories. And then the books kind of are in addition to that idea of, oh, you like this time period? Check out these other things that are happening at the same time. Um, but I don't think the books will determine what's going on unless it's like an overwhelming success, like Hunger Games or Harry Potter or Twilight, where they're just like making so much money that you can't ignore it. And then they'll... And that won't be the case. Right. I don't think so either. Correct. That's my answer. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't think... Uh, I don't think these stories or anything are going to be really big. John, you might have uncovered the key, you know, a while ago and said that it all was supposed to tie into something that we let a creator first initialize. You know what I mean? Like yeah. which came first, the chicken or the egg? So even assuming <laughs> that Benioff and Wise were actually doing that and it was tied into the High Republic, we don't know that they didn't come up with the High Republic era first and then tag them to be like, you are the people that we want to do this. Are you in? And they said, yes. You know what I mean? They still could have come second. Um, although that seems unlikely based on how Lucasfilm has done their stuff in the past. Um, I do think that this could set up fe feature films. And one of my reasons, and this is, is really random. Um, I, although I pull from this a lot is Marvel. Marvel's based on comics and stuff. And a lot of those are based on treasured comics. You know what I mean? Like people really like a lot of those characters, Black Panther, Spider-Man, stuff like that. Those are, those have stood the test of time, but they also have properties like guardians of the galaxy, which was a big surprise. And it just comes from like, Hey, we have this, these characters, we think they're cool. We think they fit into the world that we want to create. Um, and there's not a lot of source material here and there's not a lot of fans that really back these characters, but we have the vision and we're going to move forward with it. And it totally works. And it, and it has nothing really to do with, I, I don't know how true they are to the actual comic, but they, they penned, uh, or, or pinned James Gunn to pen the script and direct the movie and you know, rest is history. We all know how that mm -hmm. turned out. So I think it's yeah. very possible that they could be like, we've created this world and it's our new sandbox. We want to yeah. find somebody who can build off of what we've created. Um, and I think that's very possible, especially when you look at the track record that of directors and creators that Marvel pulls out, but let's get to the next question. Let's get to the next question. Moving on, moving on. Will the next Star Wars theatrical film, again with the films, <laughs> uh, feature oh force users that are not Jedi? So I don't know if this comes kind of from the co comic books, the, the Rise of Kylo Ren. The Ren characters don't refer to the light side and the dark side. They call the dark side the shadow, right? We've seen this before in some other things. Lacey, I'm asking you, do you think that the next feature films are going to embrace something that isn't the Jedi that maybe isn't specifically called the force, but it still is. Maybe it's not called. The so force. I guess the trick here for me personally is that I think the next film is going to be like a Mando film. Mm, I've mm -hmm. been saying that. So if off that, then I guess yes. Cause if baby Yoda's in the movie, then Yes. You could see someone use the force that's not a Jedi. 
Hmm. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah. How does that's a bigger question? How does Baby Yoda fit in with the Jedi? Mm-hmm. I feel like he's a that's, Jedi. That's interesting. You think he's a Jedi? Yeah. He hasn't gone through the training. Ah, we don't know that he's. He probably hasn't got this training. That he's doesn't a baby. make sense, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> I know, but too he's young also to begin the training. We don't. Yeah, yeah we don't know. <laughs> All right, John. Do you uh, think the next film will feature Force users that are not Jedi? So, I may have pitched this question weird. I didn't mean it wouldn't have <laughs> Jedi in it, but that it would feature people that weren't Jedi that use the Force as well, in a sense, or not. Like you Baby know? Yoda. I think, and when I wrote, I was thinking Dark Side actually, but it can mm. apply to anything. Baby Yoda is a great argument. If Lacey's putting this claim out there in multiple episodes of ours now that she thinks a Mandalorian movie's coming. So <laughs> we'll find out who she talked to off air. Um, will the next Star Wars... I think it will. I think they want to bring a powerhouse and maybe this is a good segue for our, for our discussion later uh, or a, a teaser for that. A powerhouse level villain and you, I think you ha- in Star Wars you have to involve the Force in that way. I don't think you can sell people on a Thrawn as your main villain in Star Wars when you have these good guys who have these powers that could beat you. So I think the dark side will always have a presence. I don't know can that... always beat Thrawn. Well, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I, I just feel like the dark side will always have a presence. I don't know that it will be Jedi and Sith or that kind of thing. Um, but I feel like the force has to be a big part of Star Wars, and uh, I think they need to explore new, curious, strange villains. So I think for that reason, we will see some kind of weird mystical thing happening with the force that doesn't necessarily revolve around the Jedi. Um, I also think that there's a good chance that they will have force users that are not Jedi. So I'm going to say yes to this. Three for um, three. Not to piggyback too much on what John was saying, but I do also like the idea of a villain that, you know, doesn't use the force or, or a strong character like Leia, Leia was powerful without needing to use the force. You know what I mean? Mon Mothma is powerful without needing to use the force. Like a lot of these characters are. Um, and then when it comes to the villain side, like we have Tarkin, right? Tarkin, not a force user by any means, but canonically has defeated Vader in a one-on-one fight. So it's like you you have these villains whose strategy becomes their biggest strength. And mm-hmm. if they have the strategy to defeat somebody, they become the ultimate hunter. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I do like that idea. And then beyond that, I don't want to get too into it, but beyond that, just other forms of like, you know, we we are not Jedi. We don't believe what the Jedi believe, but we believe in the force, right? They've Mm -hmm. explored that, the church of the force and stuff. Um, so, uh, three for three on that one. That, that's an interesting, I, I don't know that I expected us all to agree. And I bet there's, uh, it was was a three for three with three very different answers. Yeah. That, that's what I was going to say is like, it's somehow rounded back to the same answer, but from way different positions. Um, if you guys, have answers to this too. We'd like to hear them in the comments. So put them down there and we'll have some discussion, maybe some ideas or maybe why we're all crazy. And they absolutely (laughs) will feature the Jedi heavily. Um, Last question is going to be from another resistance officer on Patreon. And this is our resistance officer commander old Rex, which is interesting because it all kind of sounds um, like, like it's together. Yeah. Um, (laughs) The, the question is, will the, Rise of Skywalker comics, uh, will they touch on the cloning explanations introduced in the novelization? So, Lacey, I'm going to start with you on this one. Do you think there is any chance that they're going to touch on the cloning stuff? So, I haven't had a chance to read the novel yet, um, mm-hmm. but obviously that we talked about it a little bit, that they touch on how Palpatine was a clone, Um, Mm -hmm. so I think based on that conversation and conversations we've had leading up to the rise of Skywalker and cloning in particular, I think it would be a really cool panel, a bunch of panels of the process or a flashback of how it happened or something like the big test tube of Snoke's, like they have to talk about it somehow and it would be really cool in a comic. So I'm going to say yes. Okay. John, what do you think? 
Yeah, when you say that, Lacey, that makes me think of remember in the Matrix <laughs> when he's he his real body gets he wakes real up, up and he like pulls out of the thing and he's yes. like freaking out. Imagine yeah. seeing a like a Snoke doing that and thinking he's like the Snoke, but it turns out and he just realizes he's, he's just not, a clone. Yeah. And that'd be pretty intense. Intense. Stuff, so yeah, I agree. Um, I'm trying to think of the Last Jedi. Who did the Last Jedi comic stuff? Because I'm trying to think of how much they deviated from the um the movie story. It's not really story. a deviation, though. Well, or it's just going on to where um, they expand, where they decide to expand mm. on. I mean, it's certainly an area where they need to. My, I guess here, here's my question. What do we? When is this supposed to come out? Has this been announced when it comes out? Or is this an assumption that they're going to make it? Um, I don't know any details about this because when it comes out is how I need to base my answer because that's that because I'll base it when they started making it on that. Honestly, I am not positive, and I'm I'm not even positive that the Rise of Skywalker has it been announced. I don't I know don't that know if it it's has been announced. So I think this is an assumption that they're going to do it. Um, yeah, because they did the other ones. They've done so everyone. I, they did Solo, Rogue One as well. Yeah. So based on that, because this seems to be the 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 thing that fans are like, well, how did this and how did that, and it's all about this stuff. Mm-hmm. I feel like they'll do it. And that'll be, that's Matt Martin's job to be like, get someone in here to explain that and elaborate on that so that we can canonize that so people can stop throwing, you know, what against the wall and assuming that's how it went down. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think, yeah, I think it will then. Uh, That's my answer. Um, I don't think they will. Uh, And the reason is, is while the only one that I think have was interesting and kind of expanded on a few things was the rogue one. Um, run but as far as all the other ones have gone they really just breeze through the story they have like six issues to get this thing done and you can kind of split up the story and they only have so many pages and panels and they really just don't like expand on well we have so much to tell let's just let's go over here for a couple pages and explore this world um most of the time like i think I think that I wouldn't be surprised if there was a mention of the clone body or like you see like up up in look like Kylo Ren like looking over and they show something cool from the comic or whatever. But I don't think that's really exploring that idea. <laughs> like one of the Snokes winks at him from inside the tube like. <laughs> yeah. Ken, this is probably a good time to mention too that. <laughs> Um, I forgot to mention it on Monday's episode, but on Tuesday, when the novelization came out, we also released a book discussions video. So I'm I'm there with Kyle Larson. We're talking all about the novelization, and uh, we're fo- we focused on the differences between the movie and the book. So we'll that, see. This is another thing that with the comic adaptation. Is that exclusive lie. on the Star Wars News Net? YouTube channel? It is. Oh, nice. People should go subscribe. <laughs> da da da. <laughs> da da da. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for Will of the Force. Lacey, you want to take it to the Patreon pod race? Yeah. Hey, guys. It's time for the Patreon pod race. Okay, so. There are lots of ways you can support the resistance, and that's by liking this video, commenting, subscribing, ringing the bell for notifications so you don't miss any new videos, following us on Twitter at R-B-A-T-S-W-N-N, or if you want even more of us, you can head over to patreon.com slash resistance broadcast. Um, We have a bunch of different ranks that you can join with all different types of access from exclusive videos, which we do over eight a month mini episodes, even more than that at this point. We do polls and and bonus questions and conversations. We have Discord chats and mailings and all different types of stuff. Um, so definitely head over there. But as one of our ranks, we have generals, our top rank. They get a chance to be a part of the show. So this week we have General Andrew Staley. And we asked him a question and he gets 60 seconds to answer it. And then we react. So his question was, do you ever think we'll see pod racing again in live action Star Wars? If we do, what type of planet terrain would you like to see it on? So, Andrew, take it away. Easter egg. 
I think that's the only way we're going to see pod racing and live action Star Wars in the future. Uh, it was in one movie out of nine, obviously, in The Phantom Menace. But beyond that, we never really saw much of pod racing after that episode. Uh, doesn't mean it can't appear in a live action TV show or movie, but I think it'll only be in the background. It could be on a hollow projector in a casino or something that's mentioned in passing. I just don't think they're gonna be devoting a full sequence like they did in The Phantom Menace going forward to pod racing itself. It uh, just wasn't mentioned all that much in the rest of Star Wars uh, live action. And I think there's too many other stories in the Star Wars universe that can be told and too many other things that take place across the galaxy uh so that's my take guys appreciate it and may the force be with you awesome job andrew that was quite <laughs> quite the answer i have to say every week these get more and more creative and the easter egg thing was just oh i loved it i love i laughed so hard <laughs> easter egg check it like i did when- think oh here we go yeah uh it reminds like, me of uh, when John took the Vader helmet and just yeeted it across the room. <laughs> you were just like, and a nah. That was it. <laughs> John, what did you think? Uh, I, I thought you were going to go for it. I thought you were going to, because I know you're a racing fan. Uh, I thought you were going to say, well, we'll see it on ice or in mountains or something. But you make a good point. Maybe it's just something that was special and isolated to the Phantom Menace. Um it's definitely a George Lucas thing. He's obsessed with street racing and hot rods. Always has been uh, showcased in American Graffiti. And I think that was his way of putting his love of racing. And he even raced, raced cars, George Lucas himself. So I think that was his way of putting that love of his into his other creation, which is Star Wars. So um, maybe it's one of those things that Lucasfilm feels like it'd be almost like sacrilege to do it again because it was George's thing. Um uh, his own mm-hmm. personal thing that's not Star Wars. So, I mean, you trigger that in my mind. So I think I think you're right. Uh, and I agree. The Easter egg thing was pretty funny. I like any, Anytime you, anyone takes something in a very subtle sense and then just like launches it somewhere, it, it's good stuff to me. So good job, Andrew. Uh, thanks for uh, being positive, your support, and uh, killing another pod race. I love the, the Ray in the room. A lot of Ray in the room. Good stuff, man. James? Um, yeah, I think you're right. I mean, who knows after the Mandalorian went to Tatooine? Like, I half expected them to visit the track, you know, and you see them down there doing their thing or something like that. I don't think it'll ever be the focus of a story. Like, could you imagine if it all depended on the pod race or whatever? People would be like, they're just stealing ideas from the movies now, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, I definitely think that if you ever did do it, it would be something like meet this character, um, kind of like in Resistance, you know, like these characters are pilots who do this racing for a living, but it isn't like, I don't know, it doesn't, it, it's not like the show is, is based on that. It's like you have a character who does do that or something, you know, mm-hmm. but um, so I agree. Yeah. Easter egg at best. Andrew, great job. Uh, I agree with you. I think it's going to just be kind of a mention or you might see it in the background in something, but I don't think it's ever going to be a focus. I love your Ray collection. Very jealous of all the posters. Um, so thank you. He's got so- those Ray bands. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right. Uh, got to ban that Ray joke. <laughs> uh, thank you for your support. We really appreciate it. And now we're going to head over to John for our bad guy discussion. John? Obi-Wan once thought as you do. I'm the bad guy on the podcast. Might as well introduce the discussion. (laughs) What? No? No. If we need to poll who's the bad guy on the podcast. Probably me, Like the villain? The villain of TRB? I don't don't know that that works, John. (laughs) I think you want to be the villain. I'm an outlaw. It's like an obscure question. It'd probably be better for ask the existence. Yes. (laughs) The existence (laughs) podcast. Um, All right, guys, our discussion this week, does star Wars kill villains too soon? Uh, So a while back we had a discussion about whether star Wars had a villain problem. I still personally think 
that it still does. But let's talk about what may contribute to that problem uh, or, or not. Um, does Star Wars kill its villains too soon? There have been a lot of baddies in the galaxy far, far away, but some of them don't stick around long enough for us to see their full potential or enjoy their full evilness. So let's just talk about it. Um, <clears throat> so I was thinking about this based on uh, reading the article from uh, with Giancarlo Esposito and thinking like, man, I'm glad, you know, he didn't just get killed at the end of that uh, finale for The Mandalorian. That means they're going to flush him out. He's going to, you know, really be a presence in season two. That made me happy. And I thought about, you know, how many villains got kind of knocked or whacked uh, from Star Wars in a short order. Um, and I'm thinking of, you know, Tarkin, you know, one movie until obviously they went back and did Rogue One. Krennic, another villain I liked. Um you can even say Beckett, a bit, a bit of a villain. Dryden Voss, uh, Dooku um, wasn't around too long. Maul, until they did that resurrection. Uh, George Lucas, I think it, if you put a lie detector up to him, he'd say he killed him at that point. Uh, Phasma. So a lot of villains you know, who were pretty cool had a really short stay, in my opinion. So, <clears throat> I, 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 And we have so many fleshed out heroes and, and stuff like that. And really the two main villains that stretch through time, of course, Palpatine and I think you could say Vader. So I just wanted to talk about it and have a fun discussion. Not Nothing too serious, but I, I think they may kill them too soon. What do you guys think? Uh, James, I'll start with you this, uh, this week. Uh, I have this feeling that you're going to disagree with me and that's cool, but what's your take on, uh, on star Wars and their villains? Are they, they, they whacking them too soon. Um, well, I think it depends on your point of view. So if you look at a character like Tarkin, the, well, he died in the first movie and he didn't carry through to any others. But then Star Wars has this ability to go back and kind of retrospectively build that character. And they've built that character from the Clone Wars, you know, into his own novel and then in other things and, and Rogue One as well. So the lifespan of that character is long. So that, another great example, obviously, probably most people would think, well, they killed off Darth Maul too soon, right? But then they have mm -hmm. this, they have this ability Darth Maul's kind of an exception here because they kind of brought him back to life, if you will, like quote unquote. But yeah. they did expand that villain's life um, beyond uh, killing him off too quickly. Like he has had uh, an adventure or uh, um, an arc, and you know what I mean? His story has been told over many different situations. But I think as a whole, you're right, John. I think that they need to introduce us to a villain and and not presume he's dead like within the first whatever. I was going to say, because your two examples are fixes. Like Tarkin, they went back and <clears> built <throat> up a pre-story and then Maul, they just said like, he didn't die, just kidding. Like, those are fixes to me. Yeah. Yeah, sure. All right. So, uh... Lacey, what are your thoughts, uh, initial thoughts? And then I guess we can just bounce this off each other and, and see where we go with it. I 100% agree that there isn't any really good... Like, there's good villains, but they don't stick around a lot. <laughs> they're just... They're in and then they're out. And they always mm -hmm. get killed by the end of the movie or the end of the show. I think uh, Giancarlo Esposito is really the first character that we're like, oh, this is where he's going to die. And then he didn't die. And you're like, all right, cool. I guess mm -hmm. he's sticking around for a bit. Great. I'm excited for that. Um, but I mean, the only villain that I really consider as someone that like stuck through everything is obviously Palpatine. You're like, that guy was in all nine movies, kind of whatever. Um, but even when they brought him back in The Rise of Skywalker, like I was pumped because that meant other things could take place. But even then I was like, ugh. It's this like I felt like the sequel trilogy, the last three movies missed their opportunity to get another good villain in there. Like they missed their opportunity to create something that we hadn't really had except for Palpatine. Like I feel like they fell back on Palpatine, but that's a different discussion. 
I think that they do have a problem with killing off their villains too fast. But I think like James kind of hinted at or said was that it really depends on the point of view of the project. So like Krennic Hmm. was a great villain, but he's only in one movie because it was only one movie to tell. But yeah, the mall thing, me, though, I completely so 100% agree. And we can go back to that really funny resistance transmission I once read, which was about how everyone was super pumped for mall and that one guy yeah. that was dressed up as mall. And yep. then at the end of the Phantom Menace, he's just sitting there depressed because mall was dead. I remember thinking like, what a waste of a character. Like, I wish there was more of him. And yes, James, you're completely right. They went back and fleshed out his character. They did all these arcs with him and Clone Wars and Rebels and all this mm. other stuff. I'm going to argue, and I don't want you to get offended, James, that most people haven't seen those animation shows. So, like, my husband loves Darth Maul. He knows Darth Maul dies, and that's it. And then he saw him in Solo and was like, oh, he's back? This is amazing. And then that's it. You get, like, two seconds of him. Yeah, one of my buddies thought Solo took place before The Phantom Menace when they saw him pop up. Right. So I feel like (laughs) if we're talking about too short my head immediately goes to Maul because there was so much buildup with marketing and everything else. Like he was on everything, mm-hmm. all the trailers, all the marketing, all the Taco Bell toys, everything was Maul. And then they just killed him and you were like, wait, so what does that mean? It, it was a <laughs> it was a weird choice by Lucas to do that because they could have done it where Obi-Wan bested him and Maul got away or something. But sure. um, you, you one know what's weird bring- though? Oh, go ahead. It, yeah. Hold on. It, about the Maul thing, because... I think Star Wars does this a lot, and fans don't seem to get it. And I know that's kind of sounds crazy. Careful, buddy. Yeah, that <laughs> sounds a little high horsey. Well, what I what I think the the directors and what the the story that they're telling here is when they bring in a villain and they show how terrible that person is and how much how much of a true enemy that person is, and then they're defeated very quickly. I th- I don't think it is to show never mind we take it back they really weren't that important it's to show that there's someone bigger controlling the situation that's I think that's what happened with Maul I think the the reason they were killing him is because he ultimately knew that Maul was not the big bad of that trilogy he was telling a story where the big bad the real villain of this trilogy was still yeah, out there. I got a and problem with that. I think that's the same thing with Last Jedi. I think they were supposed to it was supposed to be uh, it was supposed to be a surprise that Snoke dies and you go, "What? He was so powerful. He was so crazy and they killed him. Where are they going to go next?" And it wasn't. It was like the reaction to that was more like, "Oh, well then I guess that guy wasn't that powerful or wasn't that important." It was like the mm-hmm. negative side of it. And it's supposed to be like, it's supposed to be like, we just took it to the crazy level, get ready for the next level. And it, and yeah. it, I don't think people are reacting that way when it comes to killing off a villain. Tarkin's totally different. Like that, that was just I a think whole other world at the time. Yeah. The snow, the, I mean, bringing up Snoke's good. Cause I did want to get to that because that to me is another, he was here too, too briefly. Uh, very minor, not even in person in TFA, um, uh, maybe six minutes in TLJ and killed. Um, mm-hmm. And he's supposed to be like this emperor type of villain. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Price is Right horn, without a doubt. Yeah, uh, you went over a dollar, you're out. Um, that's what I, yeah, that's what I just said. <laughs> yeah, but, but I think... That, I don't want to get into that too much, but I think that kind of forced JJ's hand. He's like, oh, wow, they just knocked out the guy who's supposed to be the new emperor, so now what are we going to do? But uh, Snoke, yeah, that is another example uh, of Snoke being maybe a villain that was killed too early. Ryan made that choice to build up Kylo Ren as the supreme leader, which would eventually make whatever they end up doing with Kylo Ren more impactful because he's going full evil as supreme leader at that point. So I get that. Um and then whatever you want to say about Kylo Ren, whether he's a villain or not, I mean, he if you look at the movie and how they market it and do everything now post the movies being out, he's still Kylo Ren in the theme parks and all that stuff because sure. of the mask and he's still the bad guy and that sort of thing. Um, so I have a question one, for you guys. One exemption, but yeah. Do you, do you not, Lacey, you said Palpatine. Uh, sorry, Palpatine was the only villain that really like carries over, but you don't think Vader? 
like Vader, they introduced him in the first movie, carried over to the second no, movie. No, no, no. I, over to the I third said movie. Palpatine and I said Vader, I'm pretty sure. Mm-mm. Yeah. You said well, the you only did, villain. Well, she said over you, the the full saga, she said uh, yeah. Palpatine was there. I didn't I didn't take it that way. I, I took that it was like the only villain. No. Um, you know, that has this like longevity is him considering he's been in all the films. I could see why yeah. you think that, but that's not what I said. I okay, said what John I, said. Because I think Vader is a good example of they didn't kill him in the first movie. And they that was a yeah. good thing. They could yeah. have, yeah. But they they let him breathe in the second movie and they let him breathe in the third movie. And even though he's redeemed at the end, he still had basically like two and a half to three movies as the villain. And then that comes into play then with mm-hmm. Kylo Ren because he too also had two... To right. three, you know, sure. movies roughly sure. as the the villain of the franchise. Um, I think Kylo people Ren is just tricky, didn't though. anticipate Vader's turn, whereas they a lot of people did anticipate his turn. So it kind of painted him wishy washy through the whole thing. Does that yeah. kind of make sense? I, I get what you're saying. I I don't see. I get in the Force Awakens after the Force Awakens. I would have told you a hundred percent that Snoke. And Kylo Ren are the villains. They are the villains mm-hmm. of this series. Mm-hmm. Then The Last Jedi changes all of that, right? And then we go mm-hmm. into the third movie, and I'm like, I don't really see him as a villain because, like, yeah, he's doing making bad decisions, but, like, he's not 100% in it. Like, there's always, like, this push and pull. I feel that, like we were just talking about with Snoke, Snoke was a villain that was set up in such a way that you're like, oh my gosh, he looks gigantic. Like, what does he look like in real life? What does this mean? He's He can use, like, the force, and he has all these powers, and everyone fears him. What does it mean? And then the second movie, he dies, and you're like, oh, well, who am I supposed to hate now? Because the whole yeah. movie makes you kind of feel bad for Kylo Ren. And then I left that movie being like, man, I feel bad for him. Like, he did terrible things. But, like, there's this underlying, like, man, he's got other stuff going on. Whereas I feel like in the original trilogy and in the prequels, you had this person that you were like, I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. And then Maul, you're like, oh, he's a bad guy. He killed Qui-Gon Jinn. And then you're like, I'm going to get to hate him more. And then he dies. And you're like, oh, I wish he was in the other two movies. Yeah. Well, that's why... I, you know, Kylo Ren is part of the reason why I have my other argument, which is Star Wars has a villain problem because they lean heavily on this whole redemption thing. And they, even and they redeemed, marketed him a lot. Yeah. And they even redeemed Maul in the eyes of many in his final battle with Obi-Wan Kenobi. They kind of like had this weird, uh, peaceful moment together where they're talking about the chosen one. And some people felt like that was Maul, like, and Maul went on his, you know, anti-Palpatine crusade. Like, he was a weird... They did a lot of weird things with Maul. Um, mm-hmm. But even not... So, I mean, just to be clear, we know Vader and Palpatine... Perfect the villains of all guys. The yeah. villains of all villains in the history of cinema. So, I think outside of those two, we're, which even if you see The Rise of Skywalker, they had to rely back on Palpatine again, and they're always sprinkling Vader in all these things here... Why? Because they have a bit of a villain problem. and But it's not just the big bads to me. It's it's these smaller, you know, bad guys. Like a Dryden Voss is such a cool character. They didn't maybe have to kill him. Um, uh, Beckett, he, he's a bit of a villain. They didn't have to kill him. Phasma, everyone says that was a bust. Uh, mm-hmm. That was a, one of the biggest marketed characters, a very popular actress from Game of Thrones in Gwendolyn Christie. Uh, Krennic, I know, I understand the argument, but they didn't have to kill him. Apparently, uh, in one of the, the new canon stories, is one of those empty seats uh, in uh, the Death Star was supposed to be his chair, and that's why it was empty, and they tried to paint that whole thing. They didn't have to kill him necessarily, but I, I get it because they made the first Star Wars years and years before that. Hux, Pride. Hux, uh, Hux made it through the trilogy, so I get that. Pride, yeah, Pride's another one. He could have yes. gotten away, yeah. He could have gotten away, yes. Uh, Dooku, mm. I felt like when he... I feel like when There's Dooku died... There's a couple died, here that I'm disagreeing with you on. I and that's fine. had to die in but, those but, movies. But they, yeah. they still died early, is what I'm saying, or very, after very brief performances. Dooku, when he got killed in Revenge of the Sith, fell flat to me. That was just kind of like... We yeah. just that was met nothing. Him. He yeah. was just another pawn in the game. Like, I want to see these villains fleshed out more and do things to make me really cheer when they get killed, and I don't get that 
more as much as I should in Star Wars. And that's what I'm hoping we get with uh, uh, Moff Gideon. I hope that that's something that they do, and I hope they learn from that, and maybe in the next film saga, they introduce us to a new villain who is evil, not someone who's like, well, maybe he's going to be good again and stuff. We've done that. We've done that tour of duty too many times now. Uh, I mean, we need another, we need the next Palpatine, someone who everyone universally hates, and that can be fleshed out. Is that Moff Gideon for Mando? Maybe. Maybe. But uh, James, you say you disagree with some of these, and that's fine. I think I'm just listing that they weren't around very long, and I don't think that I think that's fair to say. Yeah, like ones, for instance, like Krennic. Like I, I don't get what the point of the Rogue One story without killing Krennic. I just like Mendelssohn, and I, I, I want him in eight yeah. more Star Wars movies. I think that's a, that's another example of like a villain that I I'm totally fine with him being introduced <clears throat> in the movie and not making it out of that movie almost in a sense of like hey we're really trying to like paint this one story to be a villain of the week. Um I do mm-hmm. actually kind of agree that I think Dryden Voss potentially could have made it out of that movie, but I think they were going for the villain of the week with him. Um, Mm -hmm. but I disagree that Beckett could have made it out of that movie. I think the importance of Beckett dying is very, Oh, you're right. That I take that one. I I think Beckett being introduced in that movie and dying in that movie is perfect. Like that's his story. Um, Like how Han shot him. You're right. You're right about that. Yeah. And I, I do not to say that I don't like what they did with, um, Dryden Voss as well, because now they've set up that Kira succeeds is the bad guy yeah yeah so it's kind of like okay but again that that raises another question about the villain problem thing is like are we going to really hate kira when she's the bad guy no we're probably gonna want to hate maul but then again it goes back to what john said is like they've painted this picture of maul of like oh maybe he's not that bad like give Mm -hmm. me a gross bad guy that doesn't care that just hates everyone and is out to destroy things like just give me a real good bad guy like yeah, Palpatine. I, I have another I don't think one. People dismiss Maul now because of how his, he died. I don't uh, think. I uh, think I'm, I'm not dismissing him. I just wish that we got more time with him live action wise. Yeah, uh, I think also there is that bit of a rebellious anti hero thing when he uh, kind of went against Palpatine uh, later on uh, after having been his apprentice as a Sith, and he denounced that. He went. He was a bit of a. He was a bit... Oh, you can disagree, I but I mean... Yeah, that's fine. But enough about Maul. I, one I forgot that can fall into this category, Jabba the Hutt. Jabba was good. Came, but he, went. I feel like his role was perfect the way it was, though. Like, the only ones I know, that I but, feel like are too short was definitely Phasma. Phasma was way too short, especially Mm -hmm. after the marketing that they did for her for The Force Awakens, where everyone was like, oh, my God, her armor is so cool. It's a woman. Oh, my God. And then she's like, I'm in a garbage shoot. Right. Yeah. And then, yeah. Then comes back and then (laughs) then gets uh, hit over the head. I just feel, and again, coming from a place of, you know, just wanting to explore different characters and storylines and all these other things and what ifs, like... They could have done some really cool stuff with that character if they wanted to. Speaking of helmets, I got two more. Jango Fett and Boba Fett. Mm. Boba Fett was definitely included in that because he was just like... Boba Fett, had, yeah, Boba Fett had like <laughs> so, three minutes of screen time total in the so whole trilogy. So a lot of these examples are examples from the third movie, and that's kind of unfair. Jango Fett? Phasma's Last Jedi. Yeah. <laughs> I like Snoke how you went with the one examples that weren't, but Jabba the Hutt um, and Boba Fett and General Pride, those characters were introduced. I mean, Boba Fett wasn't, but um, but those characters were introduced kind of in the last movie. So it's like you really want like the movie to end with Jabba the Hutt being like, "I'll get you next time." Like, why not? Maybe it's not necessarily they, a villain that, problem. That, the it's point a- is that these were three movies. I wouldn't want to know that Pride is still out there setting up another army. I'd be like, well, then this is dumb. Like, I want that. I like the, the Rise of Skywalker 
definitively ended that. I guess like so. he's a good villain. I, I I almost argue that Pride should have been around from the beginning more than he should have survived. That's the what Rise I was going to say. I think I think it's not necessarily a villain problem. It's a villain timing problem. Like they have these great characters they they set up as bad guys, and then they either bring them in too early and end them too soon, or bring them in too late and mm-hmm. end them too soon. Like yeah. there's no carrying over. The only bad guy that like got carried over into the sequel trilogy that every movie was in it was like obviously uh, Kylo Ren and then Hux. And then Hux they made into a joke in the second movie. And then in the third movie, he's like not fully a bad guy. Like it just seems like they're not, and we keep going back to this, they're not fleshing out these bad guys and giving them enough time to be a bad guy. Yeah, and look, I, even uh, I, I know he probably wouldn't have been in for the long haul anyway but like Werner Herzog's the client like I thought that was a very oh, cool yeah. interesting character and they just greased him in the chest <laughs> like mm-hmm. um like he could have been in season 2 like uh so it just seems to happen a lot and you know I'm not staking my claim on it I'm just wondering why they do it and you know like they have their reasons but yeah well going mm-hmm. back to the beginning I think that that's an a, an example of them trying to do what I was talking about before you have this person who you're supposed to fear, which is the client. I know. And they greased him this quickly by the real bad, the real know, person who was out it's... to get him. I, I know. And it, and I, I'll agree that if they keep with that recipe, it doesn't work. It doesn't work, especially since a lot of people are bummed when those, when those characters die. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like, I think part of this conversation came up with was discussing The Last Jedi if if a lot of these characters didn't die and they carried over to the other movie, you know, like if they didn't kill off Snoke, if they didn't kill off Phasma, for instance, you know, then where where would we be going into episode nine? You know, would fans have reacted yeah. as... as Harshly had the the main villains of the story been the main villains of the story. I I think the most consequential death of all of these for an early death uh, is Snoke's to me because that just it changes everything from a narrative standpoint. It vaults Kylo Ren to a higher status as, like you're saying, James, the one, the bad guy. He's now the supreme leader, right? So that's him playing that role. He takes out the the former baddie, and now he's the guy, um, and spins everything around. So, like, if Ryan Johnson didn't kill Snoke, and Snoke carries over to episode nine, then the, what does J.J. do then? Or whoever winds up taking nine, like, you never know. Everything changes from the butterfly effect. But... Like, does he make Snoke pal- uh, Plagueis after all and stuff? Like, there's so many... Th- that was such a pivotal change, like, where the trajectory of the sequel trilogy uh, just spun in wh- whatever direction we wound up landing in because of Snoke's death, whereas a lot of these is just kind of, like, not necessarily not important, but, like, oh, man, I wish we saw more of that person. Oh, I wish we saw... That would have been cool to see more of that. And sometimes that's all you need in Star Wars, right? Am I right, Lacey? Like, we're just... Is it? It's okay to just say it would have been cool to see more Phasma. I feel or, like that's where I'm coming from, but I have to agree with you. I think Snoke is the most, to me, the most jarring death that was like playing off of what James said earlier of like, oh, what happens next? But I don't think the what happens next was fully fleshed out. So that's why it feels like I didn't get the payoff of him being the villain. Yeah. And that's no, why I yeah. have those feelings of, oh, Palpatine was called in off the bench because, yeah. you know, our star player just got, you know, a concussion. So I have to pull him mm. off the bench and yeah. put him in. Nice. Look at you with the sports analogies. You're such You're a welcome. big sports fan. It's crazy. I know. Um, I can't wait to watch all the sports this year. A lot of sports <laughs> happening this year. Yeah. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Um, all um, right. So well, you I've guys... got another example. Yeah. Go ahead. You might and like then... to play with. Yeah, and then we should uh, do final thoughts after that, probably. But yeah, Rebel season one, Grand Inquisitor built him up, killed him at the end of the first season. That's um, that's fair. <clears throat> Rebel season two. All right, there's other Inquisitors. There's there's a bunch of them. Seventh sister, fifth brother, 
um, ninth brother, all dead at the end of the second season to bring in Maul, right? Maul did carry over for a little while. Uh, and the third season is where they introduced Thrawn. And I think that's where they, that's where like the problems kind of were fixed because they, they introduced Thrawn. They kept him through through the fourth season. He did f- defeat them, um, mm-hmm. so to speak, except for Ezra, you know, flips it on we him don't or know. whatever. Yeah. And, um, and that villain is not dead and people are still waiting to see where that story goes. And I don't think they're going to start that story with like, Oh, Thrawn died a while ago. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Like you're going to see that character carry through for a, a lot longer. So I think introducing him back into the canon, I know he's a long, he's a respected villain, but they brought him back and they brought him back with the intention for him not to be a Krennic or yeah. a Snoke. You know what I mean? They well, are very I well aware Thrawn that this good. character is going to run through for a while. Yeah. The, the animated, because there's a lot of villains in the Clone Wars that you could bring up, but that's more of yeah. a, like you say, this week on the serialized. Villain like of the this, week, yeah. This is this week's bad guy. Um, so there's plenty of those. Uh, but then even even Resistance, like a lot of people like Commander Pyre, didn't he die in like the finale or something like that? I didn't finish Resistance, but uh, someone said he died. Uh, spoiler alert. Um, people liked him. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of these villains that people maybe say like, oh, that would have been cool to see more. I loved his uh, his gold, uh, his Stormtrooper armor or the red Stormtrooper armor. So there's a lot of like minor other ones that in the comments, you guys could probably fire off some that we didn't even bring up that were mm-hmm. maybe fringe villains even that um, that uh, died that you would have liked to see more of. It doesn't have to be some big impact player, even though we talked a lot about those. Uh, but do you guys have final thoughts on this? Uh, I thought it was a cool, fun discussion. And um, talking villains is always uh, a good thing because hopefully they're always coming up with new ones and then we can keep approaching this subject in the future and see if uh, they changed the culture of that. So, um, uh, James, final thoughts on uh, do, are they killing villains too soon? And where are we going in the future? <laughs> well, John likes bookends. So I'll say, again, it all depends on your perspective of what's too soon, you know? I think yeah. even in your example of a character um, dying in the resistance, uh, yeah, okay, well, that was just two seasons, but that he, that character made it through the whole arc of the show and like, you know, was one of the l- last people to go. He was the adversary for the entirety sure. of the show. Sure. So it's, it, it depends on your perspective, but I do think what you said at the beginning, what I said at the beginning is I think they need to build their villains for longer periods of time, um, introduce us to a villain and let them be the big bad the whole time. Stop killing them off and tell it, but nice. wait till you see the guy who's really in charge. Yeah. 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 I, I, I feel mean, like that's, that's cool, kind of, but I feel like that's a collective that we've all kind of agreed on here. Lacey, you, you're, you are on kind of the same page with that, right? Yeah. I think that we need a really good bad guy in the future of Star Wars film and TV, which we're already getting in TV with Moff Gideon, but the next films, they need a big bad guy. A big bad guy with no yes or no, no pull, dark side, light side, whatever. Like, just give me a bad guy. And I think that, like James said, yeah, a lot of these villains have played their part given the time frame that they were supposed to play. But at the same time, like he said, like, I just think they're getting killed off too early that you don't get the full time of like them wreaking havoc. And it's always like, oh, well, what's the next person? Well, why don't we just focus on the one that we have that we already Mm -hmm. like? Like, give us some time with it. Yeah. And I think that out of all of them, Snoke, I think, is the most jarring for me. And it always will be, I think, because... You have Vader and Palpatine, which just feel like they're just such good bad guys. Yeah. So when Snoke was introduced, you were like, oh, man, what does this all mean? He is Mm -hmm. a good bad guy. And then the next movie, you're like, dun, dun, (laughs) he's gone. Yeah. Actually, I have one more final thought. I know that's kind of (laughs) crazy. I just (laughs) thought I would like to see. I wouldn't mind if, if they did a movie where they were fighting the villain and they defeat the villain. But they do kind of the Doctor Strange aspect of it of one of the good guys starts to sway away. 
So they still have like the villain of the week as far as like the franchise is going, but you're seeing a person turn into the ultimate villain, siding with the bad guys. You know what I mean? You get yeah. get the beginning to end, especially when like, like uh, we got we're supposed Pyro. to get that. Well, we're supposed to get that with Anakin, but we already knew he was going to turn. Right? It, how great would the would the prequels have been if we're like, oh, that's Anakin, and this is going to be a great story, and like we're watching him decline? We didn't know it yeah. was going to happen. That that becomes really cool because by the end we're like, Anakin the villain, that guy sucks, <laughs> you know. But yeah. we know he's redeemed, yeah. so it, I don't know. It becomes a bigger yeah. thing. But yeah, I'd like to see that. I'd like to see a decline. Yeah. Um, Lacey, anything else? Nah, dog. <laughs> I Second think, final thoughts? <laughs> I think the, um, the whole, like, this is the real bad guy thing is like, it's that sequel thing where it's like, yeah, that first bad guy was bad, but wait till you see this one. And it's yeah. like the Death Star 2, it's bigger. Starkiller base. Oh, that's bigger. And it's I like, <laughs> made Snoke. Yeah, right. <laughs> and it's just uh that's a very like movie sequel thing to do like like Scream 2. They're like, "Oh, I was really the one who made my son a murderer and stuff." It's like, "Oh god, like these retcons, <laughs> just insane." Um uh, but I I do think it's a problem. You guys know I I've thought Star Wars in general has a villain problem and a lot of it has to do with the whole oh, I'm conflicted and I'm going to be redeemed thing. Nope. We need the next Palpatine. We need the next Big evil who everyone just hates. There's no redemption whatsoever. Just pure evil. The 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 world leader that George Lucas would write these types of stories about that it needs to be vanquished from the from the uh, galaxy. Um, it it it's part of that hero's journey. You need to defeat evil, and we need pure villains. And uh, we rode Palpatine as far as we could, and it's time to introduce some new bad blood. So uh, that was a fun discussion, though. I like that. Uh, like we always say in the comments, let us know others we may not have brought up uh, your thoughts on our thoughts about this. And do you think <laughs> Star Wars kills off villains too much? Or maybe you disagree with this. Either way, light up the comments. Hit us up on Twitter at RBATSWNN like you did with these in our next segment. So, Lacey, it is time. It is. What? <laughs> it is time for Resistance Transmissions. <laughs> So, yay. yay! So, guys, Ichupa. <laughs> if you don't already know, this is how it works. Every week, John puts up a crazy, wacky situation on Twitter, and he asks you guys for your responses, and you give them to us, and then I read them. So, I don't know what the scenario is. I don't know what the answers are. I'm going to read them right now, and we'll see what happens. It's a fun surprise every every Thursday. All right. So the scenario is Ray is in line at the DMV to add Skywalker as her last name. <laughs> uh, she has a while to wait. She is number 66. She sees other Star Wars characters there, too. Pick any character and why they're at the DMV. Oh, <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> I hate the DMV. All right. So, first up is Cam Ray. At Cam Ray. First one. Way to get you, your handle, You did Cam. it, Cam. All right. He says, Stormtrooper JK2020 is registering his, tre his tread speeder when the DMV worker notices his weathered jetpack. Worker. You fly now? Worker two. They fly now, workers three and four. <laughs> they fly now, random alien translated. They fly now, everyone else. They fly now, Ray. They effing fly now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, remember when everyone was so upset that that was like a part of the episode nine? They're like, they already flew in this thing. Remember? Oh, I don't remember that. Ugh. I don't think everybody was upset. Oh, I don't think there were two people were upset, and then everybody was talking about how those people were upset. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Next up is Adam Odal at Odal Adam, who said General Grievous is there updating his organ donor information. <laughs> and it's an image of General Grievous on fire. He just, he's on fire. He's on fire. 
<laughs> Next is Tampa Movie Guy at Tampa Movie Guy, and he said he Kane and Jarris has to retake the eye exam. <laughs> <laughs> that is really good. Uh, that's messed up. <laughs> Next up is Mark at the kind of vacants. It's actually duh underscore kind underscore awakens. He said, cheer it. I'm here to renew my license. Clerk, sir, you're blind. Cheer it. I am one with the force and the force is with me. <laughs> Clerk, sir, you would cause a horrific crash. Cheer it. All is as the force wills it. <laughs> Clerk, please find the exit. Cheer it. Are you kidding me? I'm blind. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Next is Diga666 at Diga666. And Diga says, Jabba is in line to get Salacious Crumb certified as an emotional support animal. That's kind of cute. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm. Next is Todd DeGrossier at Todd Knows Best. And Todd said, Din Djarin is there arguing with the worker about how taking his helmet off for his updated <laughs> license picture oh. is not the way. <laughs> it's nice. not the way. It's That's like, take off good. your hat, sir. He's like, no, I've got hair. Yeah. Uh, next is Andrew Gamble at A.L. Gamble. And Andrew said, Baby Yoda trying to convince them he's 50 and old enough to drive. <laughs> <laughs> next is Four Leaf Clover at Marie Ma 11091509. You know, wow. Marie, you should, not, your handle. you should not put <laughs> your social security number as your Twitter handle. Just a little <laughs> advice. but That's phone number. And oh. Four Leaf Clover said... General Hux is at the DMV to renew his license. He approaches the counter and recognizes the clerk clerk as Poe Dameron. I guess Poe Dameron has some downtime from the resistance. Mm. Uh, When his license arrives in the mail, he's immediately enraged because his name is printed as General Armitage Hux. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) got him. Yeah. Next is Matt at MIB1188. And Matt said, Obi-Wan is arguing with the clerk that they don't need to see his identification. (laughs) I love it. That is very good. (laughs) Agent 37 at underscore Agent 37 says, Jar Jar is there, dot, 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 because he works there. (laughs) Poor Jar Jar. (laughs) Poor Jar Jar is paying the bills. All right, guys. Thank you so much. If you want to be on the show, make sure to follow us on Twitter at R-B-A-T-S-W-N-N. Every week, John puts up the crazy scenario, and you give your answers, and you could be on the show. Back to you, John. All right, guys. Thanks so much for those. We love ending the show with those because they're so fun. And uh, seeing Lacey read them through the first time, always mm. a treat. Um, but <laughs> thanks thanks for listening and watching and being a part of the resistance. Uh, the base is always open for you guys. So make sure you're subscribed to us on whichever platform you prefer. It could be Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube, any of the other ones. You can go to resistancebroadcast.com and check uh, links directly to other apps and stuff that you can uh, find us. So we're everywhere. If you have an app that doesn't have us, you can find another one. Uh, mm-hmm. Make sure you guys are uh, going to StarWarsNewsNet.com every day for your latest Star Wars news, reviews, editorials, information, and more. If you'd like to support what we do, we have two episodes every week, plus a lot of stuff exclusive to our YouTube channel and a lot of exclusive content on our Patreon page. But if you would like to support us, head to Patreon.com slash Resistance Broadcast. We appreciate all the support for what we do. And also, you get a lot of benefits and rewards from that. There are five tiers uh, from $2 a month and up. And as you climb the ranks from lieutenant all the way up to general, the perks and benefits go up as well. Uh, There's also a Discord server and uh, mailings that uh, Lacey puts together and sends out for us. A lot of things I can't even get into now. Just, Just take a minute. Hop over to patreon.com slash resistance broadcast and check it out. And if you see a tier that works for you and you want to support us, we appreciate it very much. Uh, Very special thank you to our generals, Carmelo, Andrew Staley, Neil Lowry, Jeremy Myers, Neil Shaw, David Probus, John Reese, Seth Keim, Micah Harrison, Tampa Movie Guy, Michael Gaines, and Val Trichkoff. Generals, thank you so much for all of your support. We really appreciate it. Uh, We're all wearing shirts from either Star Wars Newsnet or TRB. If you want to, head to tpublic.com slash user slash resistance broadcast. Sales are happening all the time. James makes most of our designs for us. Uh, So good job 
to you, James. Um, more coming as always, and probably some cool news uh, about the future of our merch uh, a little bit down the line, but that's all we're going to say right now. Uh, you guys can find me. Did I do everything? Yeah. 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 You guys can find me on Twitter at Johnny Hoey and at StarWarsNewsNet.com. James? Twitter and Instagram at Meyer Trunks. Lacey? People can find me on Twitter and now Instagram, more active, hey. at Lacey Gillaran. <laughs> Going for the 10K on Instagram? What are you talking about? All right, guys. What do you think he's talking about? Yeah, Lacey? she knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you enjoyed another experience with the Resistance broadcast. But guess what? You're going to have a weekend. It's going to be great, hopefully. And we'll be back on Monday with another episode. So enjoy it. And we'll see you when the base opens in just a few days right here on the Resistance broadcast. See you around, kids. Wash your hands.